welcome to yet another episode of Heads Held High. I've been inspired by a quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson lately. It says, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. And I truly believe this to be true. What lies within us is, is profound and strong and great. And here we are with two very young leaders uh, who, of course, have a lot of profound within them. We've got Vaishnavi and we've got Spandan from uh, Father Agnel Central School, Pilar Goa. Uh, this is the first school from Pilar Goa, and we're so excited to have them. Uh, a warm welcome to CCR TV. Thank you. Thank you. Good and uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to all our viewers. Tell us something about yourself. Go ahead, Spandan. I'm Spandan Patsore, studying in grade 9 of Father Agnel Central School, Pilar, Goa. I was born in Maharashtra, brought up in Hyderabad. Today, I'm living in Goa for the past five years. Today, I'm representing my school as a Deputy Prime Minister of my school. Uh, my name is Vaishnavi Vupal Vanchu. I'm studying in class 9, Father Agnel Central School, Pilar, Goa. I hail from Hyderabad, but I'm currently staying in Goa for the past six years. I am the Prime Minister of our school. So, I'm intrigued. What's the difference between Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister? What's, wh why the different tags? Uh, Prime Minister is uh, one of the highest positions of the school. Okay. And everyone, each minister, the Finance Minister, the Culture Minister, even me, the Deputy Prime Minister, come under her. We have to work with the coordination with her and uh, follow the orders of her, the principal, as well as the teachers. And uh, she is the one who okay. looks after the interests of the students. If okay. there is anything that is disturbing the students, that is going against the students, it's she who looks after it and informs her. And then we are the one who execute the uh, following steps, who implement it, which is necessary. Very interesting. So I'll tell you something. I don't know if you know this. But in other schools that we've interviewed, the format is that we don't have a single leader or a single forward leader. It is, of course, there's always a group, but for the group, there's two. If it's an all boys school or an all girls, girls school, there's, then there is like a head boy, head girl. But this is the first time we have a co-ed that has, of course, a very democratic kind of, uh, it's, it's very democratic, right? Like you are elected and then there's a the one forward leader. And then there is, of course, not the opposition, but then there is, uh, uh, then there's a cabinet behind yeah, you. Yeah, student council. There's a student council behind you. That's very interesting, and I'm sure very, uh, uh, very democratic in that way. Um, how does it feel to be in the cabinet, let alone be the prime minister or deputy prime minister? How does it feel to be in it's the like cabinet? It's like a very, uh, it's a very prestigious position. Like uh, you have to respect the others more than. If you want them to respect you, you also have to respect the others. You have to like talk politely and all that. I feel actually very happy to be in this position. I'm sure. Yes, it is. You must be very happy to be in this position. What about you, Spandan? Uh, yes, as you said, <coughs> being in the school parliament is one of the most uh, moment of pride for ourselves. And do our teachers also feel uh, uh, happy and proud uh, being here? Uh, as you said, in the school parliament, yeah, it's a democratic form of uh, school governing. Uh, and uh, there's an opposition leader as well, as you said. Because, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because that's very much necessary for us to function properly. Wow. I, I, please ex elaborate. I want to hear more. Uh, as we know, in our country, we have opposition leaders. Yes. Without them, the prime minister, the government of the country cannot function well. True. Yes. Yeah. So we too need that. And we have it as well, the opposition leader, without which uh, somewhere we are incomplete. We are not able to perform it completely, our roles, uh, because the opposition leader always looks into us, criticizes whatever we do. Yes. And uh, that's, that's how uh, we are go growing and looking after the children, their interests. Uh, everyone has a role in it, everyone contributes towards it. And uh, just a thanks to all of them. That's nice. And it's uh, actually like he points out the mistakes, like what we do, and we get to rectify our mistakes. What's his title then? He, he or she? What's the Opposition title? Opposition leader. You actually have an. Oh my God. Okay, this is mind blown. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna take a moment here right now to 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 like. I think my the pitch of my voice has increased. Uh, I have to shout out to the management 
of Father Agnell Central School, Pilar. You are doing something incredible. For young leaders to think about a critical, uh, uh, a critical way of thinking where someone says, hey, I don't think you did that well, and to take that in your stride and move forward. My next very natural question to you is, what do you think of constructive criticism or criticism at all? What's your take on it? Like if uh, now if we have made a mistake, so he or, he or she like when they point at us, we have to be like careful enough to like rectify our mistakes and be good to respond it back. Like okay, and and does any of this conversation happen uh, formally or it's all informal conversation? No, it's formal as well. Uh, most of the times, uh, if to be informal, it's within our friends, uh, and if it's with the ministers, the other ministers of the school, then it should be formal and sometimes it gets informal, but that's okay. If any criticism is there, we should take it positively. No, I agree. W w where I am coming from is, I want to understand the method of communication. I'll give you an example. When there is a teacher in a classroom and she is giving you feedback, let's say you've answered an English paper and she has to give you feedback, she will give you verbal uh, notes and she'll give you written notes because what happens with written notes is you can look at it you can you can figure out what you have to do next when they answer when, when you answer an essay example they'll give you notes at the side right so my question to you is and this is where I'm coming from I would like to understand when the opposition leader goes ahead and gives you let's say a tip let's say you've done something uh, what's the one thing that they would probably say that went wrong went wrong any one thing. Something Mostly simple. the discipline thing. It's not like uh, it's good in discipline, but sometimes like the most the smaller happen. kids. Okay, so, so let's say the opposition leader says, uh, grade one discipline was, you know, not taken care of. How does he convey this to you or she convey this to you? Uh, he does not use any rude uh, methods or he's not very much arrogant. Uh, and No, is it verbal? Is it written? It's always verbal. Okay, it's written always methods uh, are us usually people do not um, pay more attention to the written material. Yeah. When you say it verbal, you try to convey what you really want to convey. Okay. That's not always possible through the written notes. Okay. So uh, he says it very much positively. And do you have meetings? Uh, yeah, we are going to start with meetings as well so because this is the start of the year. It's nothing still uh, much started, but we are going to start with meetings as well. Did the previous cabinet, did the previous parliament, as you call it, have meetings? Were there, were yes, there meetings? Yes, yes. Yes. I was okay. there in the last year as the greenhouse captain, so I used to attend the meetings. So, like, it's uh, very respectful and it's most, uh, like, it's formal and also informal because, like, we are mostly friends, but we, uh, like, when we're talking about decisions and all, we talk, like, properly. And formally. Yeah, formally. I, I like that. I, I am happy to be able to take constructive criticism, to be able to take... Uh, I can't do it sometimes. I must tell you, like when, when someone says, hey, I think you did that wrong. I'm like, no, <laughs> I did not do that wrong. No, I cannot. Like, no, no. I think the first response that comes is no. I don't think, you know, uh, to be able to do that in a space and to learn that uh, in grade nine and grade 10, I mean, hats off to you, hats off to the management. And really to bring the parliament in, in, in a real way to the school bodies, I'm impressed. Moving on to the next question that I have for the two of you. What do you think a leader should be like? A leadership basically uh, is not uh, that, yeah, I am the one person and you will listen to me. It's not like that. It's not called a, dicta it's a dictatorship and it shouldn't be like that. It's called a democracy, school democracy. So a leadership is like you always listen to one. You are not the one who walks in the front and others walk behind you. You are the, always the one who walks at the last and everyone walks ahead of you. So that you uh, get to know their progress, you get to know what's wrong in them, what's good in them. And uh, leadership uh, is like who always explains to them in a polite manner. It's not uh, like, uh, suppose if you, in an IPL, if you have lost a match, the captain will not uh, say in a rude manner that you have lost a match, your bowling was not good, uh, your batting was not good, it's not the right way to play. So, uh, in a similar way, in a leadership, even in a school, it's not a way. A rude, being rude is not a way. We should always be polite and explain them in a polite way or else they will never make a progress. So, according to you, to sum what you said, leaders are polite, leaders lead from 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 uh, from not just from the front it's not all about front yeah. you have to kind yeah, of lead exactly. from the back and you would say that leaders are 
it's not about that one person it's about the people you're yes, leading it's about the people what about you so first like if it's a leader you have to be patient enough to listen to everyone like uh, every person who like what they want to say you have to understand because they are the ones who are actually there and they know like what problems are there and all that so you have to be patient listen to them and then try to resolve it by discussing like it can't be a matter of like only my decision i have to uh, talk to all the like a- entire s- student cabinet and then like we have to uh, discuss it properly and then take a decision like a collective decision yeah it's yeah. like a team work group work it's like a it's like a group collective uh, and i have to ask pandan so which team did you did you cheer for did your team lose <laughs> csk <laughs> Oh, then your team won. Yeah, then. actually, I'm then. a real Dhoni fan. I okay. really wanted CSK to win, and they won. And yeah, they won. congratulations. Actually. The reason why I asked, you said when when the team loses the match, I said, oh, poor thing, your team has lost or what? No, uh, no. Do you follow cricket? Do uh, you? No, not really. Not I'm, really. Like, I I have interest in other sports, like mostly badminton or something. Oh, that's like. nice. B- okay. Badminton, swimming also. Oh, lovely. Uh, yes. but uh, yeah cricket seems to be like a why but i do totally understand other sports also uh, deserve that kind of uh, fandom and following so leaders are patient leaders are kind if i can re- paraphrase from you leaders lead from the back when you say leaders i always have heard i'm sure we've all heard who are watching also leaders have a vision leaders plan the path ahead how can a leader lead from behind let's say there is an event to be organized okay we have to if ev- organize a flower arranging competition all classes are participating what do you mean in this situation or in another event which needs to be organized that a leader leads from the back what what does that mean so like you? you have to take uh, suggestions from others like if someone is suggesting something you just don't ignore it you like uh, like take it listen to it if it's not good it's okay but if you, it uh, sometimes mo- like most of the times the uh, like people other people's suggestions are good yeah. so you can follow that and then uh, it's not like only my thing so everyone has to work together to put even if it's a cultural program or anything everyone has to work towards it Okay, what you're saying. So and you have to be dedicated towards it. It's not like uh, something you are just doing and done. You have to be dedicated and like you have to do it with your full concentration and interest. So it has to be a collaborative effort. Yeah, exactly. That it means to 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 lead from the back. Yes. Uh like always uh like she said uh if we are on the f- in the front and uh, we are doing, uh, we are just saying that yeah do this do that i want this to be ready i want that to be ready and uh, you're not looking at the back what's going on the struggle that people are doing right yes, even you are in front of the camera we are uh, just having an interview but you don't know the struggle behind going on yes. for the editing for the light software etc so we should always take their uh, their opinion and never uh, say that uh, never just uh, uh, give importance to their opinions as well just don't know, ignore it because if they are not there we are not going to thrive anymore and absolutely true yeah. to to have that perspective now you know this as a leader you're in the cabinet now let me ask you an honest question when you were in 6th standard if someone told you this would it make sense no, not at all <laughs> <laughs> what would you say to that person i would just say that uh, he has only to say something at the back <laughs> he's going to enjoy everything <laughs> what would you say to like, to yourself in the sixth standard about this it's like it's, uh, it's some sort of a joke mostly <laughs> some like, sort of a joke like what are you talking about yeah um i i do understand this and i have to tell the two of you as time passes by you are going to go to the 10th you are going to the 12th and you are going to move forward you all will have more things that you put into this basket of leadership of yours currently this basket of leadership is talking to you about discourse talking talking to your peers in critical thinking in in you know verbally figuring it out so discourse is a part of it you have with you the weapon of patience you know the armor of patience you also have with you this idea that it has to be a collaborative leadership as you grow you will add on more things to it what is one thing that you hope to add on to this basket of leadership of yours something a quality that you think you know i think the next step is to to get this quality what's that quality <laughs> that's a nice question what would you uh, in lead uh, what i would like to have is uh, like i observe in uh, when you are a leader uh, people in oh the leader has come get into the class get into uh, your respective places so i i want that uh, no one should be like afraid of uh, the a leader not only me or anyone else uh, don't be afraid uh, don't be rude with him don't think that he only enjoys at the back because because we do have to make a struggle so no so you would like to gain or you would like to learn 
how to break barriers between yeah, people. Exactly. There's a certain barrier when you are a leader. There's like this uh, automatically because of yeah. the way we are and because of the way we think. There's certainly a divide. So you'd like to you'd like to break barriers. That's exactly. one thing that you'd learn. What about you? Uh, time management. I'm like yeah, it's good, but. You have to learn to uh, like manage your time properly. Yes. You have to give time to your studies, like your extracurricular activities, sports or whatever. Like now leadership thing. So you have to be careful with your time and like learn to manage it properly. Yes, I get what you're saying. Uh, I must tell you though, time management is a lifelong yes, process. Exactly. You reach any age of your life, you're like, okay, I still have to learn a little bit more time yeah. management. I have to figure it out. So time management, yes, and time management is a lifelong process to be learned. Um, who is that one champion, that one leader, that one person who, who you look at and be like, leader who to aisa hona chahiye. I know what you're going to say. I, I can see the smile on your face. You're going to say Dhoni. Yeah. I, I knew you were going to go there. Okay, but tell us why. Uh, why? Because um, as we know that uh, CSK has uh, lost many matches as well. And uh, when, um, if the team players are in a stress, Dhoni is like, hey, come, let's go for a party or let's have a tea. That's uh, happening in your head, okay? Like, I don't <laughs> think he says that, but okay, I'll give you that. He chills them. He makes yeah, them calmer. Exactly. Okay. So he chills them. He's not like, ah, oh, you have to practice more. Yeah, do you have to practice more? Uh, but uh, there's some space uh, for celebration or if uh, for stress reliving. Uh, that that's uh, that should be a quality of a leader. Uh, you should always be. Uh, I feel you should you should be like Dhoni as a leader uh, because uh, if not like him, then you lose most of the qualities of a leadership. He has all of them actually. That's why he's my inspiration over there. That's nice. It's it's nice to have leaders to look up to what about yourself my father he's like i feel for me he's a good leader so he he's like the best person i've known what is the quality about your dad like how he said uh tony uh, as a leader he doesn't let the stress get to him he's called the cool captain because no matter what stress is going on you will never see him get angry throw a fit there's there's this cool he's cool as a cucumber as they say and it's a good thing to have a cool head when you are in pressure situations as you said your dad what what is it a quality so like when uh, he says like uh, whenever like you're doing a task completing a task even if you do it for 2 hours and like taking breaks in the middle it won't make like a sense or something so whenever you're doing a job or work or anything you have to, even if you're doing it for one hour put your full concentration to it without getting distracted you shouldn't take breaks or get distracted so when you're doing that like uh, it uh, you it comes in your brain easily and it's easy to understand everything dedication Would yes dedication concert yeah concentration dedication he's a very dedicated person and as very a leader much. you have to be dedicated what has i can see the two of you are very well spoken you all are well read i am sure you have some really uh, profound thoughts at your age when do you think you found yourself to be a leader it was there a moment it happened someone told you is is there a moment where you kind of felt like maybe i have the qualities of a leader or is the, am i the first person who is asking you this question and you've not thought about it no i it's like okay last year so i was the captain of greenhouse as i've said so that time okay i felt like i was a good leader i could take responsibility i could manage things and like lead the team to the front so that like they could achieve something correct okay so you by being a leader you became more confident yes. to be a leader and yourself honestly let me tell you that i still don't see myself as a leader I do I am the leader but I somewhere feel that uh he could be the better leader than me uh so but as time passes I have to learn I have to go through the methods I yes. have to uh, I have to understand that how a leader functions uh because that's how we always have to make progress we cannot sit at one place I agree yes yeah. pandit so uh, this is where I will tell you something very interesting and we'll take from what Vaishnavi has said it took her an entire year to believe that she was a leader i assure you we've had so many leaders from schools here i've spoken to so many leaders and the truth is this for you and for everybody who's watching the more responsibility you take the more leader the more of a leader you become it's the truth if you go ahead and in fifth standard someone says okay so who's going to mind the class for this month and you say me it's just a minding that and when you do it well you become a little bit more of a leader you become a little bit more of a leader so 
the fact that you are the deputy prime minister, you are a leader. It's just going to take them some time to sink in. And and I'm sure you're going to do well with it. Yeah. Uh, I'll give the two of you some time to go ahead and give a shout out to your cabinet members, your friends, your family and the school because I know uh, you wouldn't be so wholesome without the entire support of all of these lovely people. So go ahead and give them a shout out to whoever you want to do. So hey guys, um, I would like to thank my principal, teachers, parents and all my friends for encouraging me and like helping me to be like who I am today. Hey, mommy, papa, good morning, Chino, uh, all the cabinet ministers, my principal and of course my fellow friends, my students and the teachers. Without all your support, today I wouldn't be sitting here for an interview and neither would I be the Deputy Prime Minister. So thanks a lot for your support and please keep me su uh, keep supporting me. Yes, thank you. yes, thank you for supporting them. And uh, I have to say, uh, it, the journey just begins here. I think from here on, there's so much more leadership that comes your way and uh, and I hope and I pray the best for the two of you. It's going to be a lovely year that that unfolds before you. And then responsibilities of then standard, that <laughs> also. Uh, the best of luck, best of luck in leading the parliament in your school. And uh, a, once again, a big shout out to the management of Father Agnes Central uh, School. Um, I think it is it is brilliant what you're doing with these kids. They're sharp, they're witty, and uh, they're going to make good leaders. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you with one more episode very shortly with uh, two more young leaders of Goa. Thank you. <laughs>